Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Ride Mechanic channel. How the heck are you doing today? Uh, over the weekend, I've made this little, these little clips about the mini break that I made. And they're popped up and they got quite popular on the shorts. So I wanted to make a little bit longer video just to kind of go over some of the stuff. Because people are like, wow, that's really cool. And yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It is really cool. It's something that I've always kind of wanted to do. And make some little things like this and some oddball stuff. So let's get into this little mini break. Now get ready. Here we go. <laughs> So first of all, if this is your first time here, make sure you like and subscribe. I do plenty of other stuff. My channel is mainly about how rides work, but this particular time I'm doing a little bit of a, a homemade project here. So this is my mini break. <laughs> um, basically what I did is I went out into the shop and fabricated a miniature ride break, essentially. This is almost a one quarter size linear pinch brake. This is like you would, uh, the styling that I kind of thought about when I did this was like a Vacoma style or an Aero style uh, pinch brake. And I didn't want to mimic the those styles exactly because I didn't feel that was necessary and they got a lot of little parts and pieces in there that I didn't want to do. Um, so I came up with um, kind of like I used some of the likeness of it and then I built the rest by hand. Um, so let's start off. Hmm, where do we start with this? Okay, so this is made out of, uh, it's made out of steel. Uh, a lot of you know I use a lot of cardboard when I do examples and stuff for the channel. But this is made out of steel. Everything is carbon steel except for the actual brake, uh, the brake lining in the middle of it. This goldish looking stuff right here. This is actually brass. This is like a, like some roller coasters actually use. And the brass is actually anchored in a fashion like it is on a real brake. Let's see, kind of turn this. I don't know if you could see that in there. Let's see, you know what I could do? I can record this with another camera, hold on. Okay, if we're looking in the brake here, what that actually is, is those are actual brass rivets that go inside there. And that's all inside that brake. And those rivets are what hold that brass lining onto the steel frame. Just like you would on a real ride. This is pretty much the exact same thing. It's on both sides. The gap, the air gap that's down the center is just about an eighth inch. Or I'm sorry, uh, just over a quarter inch. It's about, it's about six to seven millimeters, somewhere right in there. Um, one, of my, one of my thoughts was... Um, in fact, if I could actually slow something down with this. So I have thought about like taking this into the shop and and uh, doing some testing with it to actually like slow something down. I would have to make a whole nother fixture for it to sit in. Um, and then I basically would have to run something by here. And then as soon as it got in this area, basically I would close it together. And then it would slow down and probably stop it. So on the back side, or on the inside of it, you could see there's these flimsy things inside of here. These flimsy things, and they're on both sides. These are just like these skis would be in real life. These are the bladder. This is the bladder on the inside. So the bladder is a piece of material that when I put air into one side of it, I mean this side over here, when I put air into this side, this bladder that runs behind there expands and causes the whole assembly to pinch shut. Okay, let's put some air to it. Oh yeah, that works.
cool. Now what opens them back up is on the back side, I've put two springs front and back in there and the spring actually pulls the brake back open. Uh, you're familiar with Aero or Vacoma style brakes that look similar to this. They actually use a leaf spring that runs across there and has two C-shaped clamps that hold on to this ski that allow it to move back and forth. That requires a really complex sub-assembly underneath here and I didn't want to try to do that so I just used regular coil springs, four of them, to open the brake back up. Now the frame is pretty much just pieces of steel welded together. There's not too much there. On the ends of it, both sides, underneath right here, there's this metal bracket right here that my hand's on. That metal bracket is what these two smaller brackets latch on to. And that's the same on this side. You could see here's the other side of my bladders right here right there. This metal bracket also, these other two hold on around that. And what those are, those are to keep the skis down. So when you have a train coming in and these are trying to slow the train down, uh, they have a tendency to lift up. Also, so those are to keep the skis down. Also, the side effect of that is that if you were to take this assembly and invert it, those will also hold the skis in place while it's inverted. And the skis can still work just fine, if you can see underneath there. Sorry. They still work just fine, just like that. The bladders move a little bit, but that's fine. Um, on the, uh, I've used some uh, special bladder material for these, but on the real ones, the bladder is more of a rubberish material, so it doesn't move as much, but they do tend to walk from side to side. On the underside, uh, this is mainly gonna be static on the desk here for most of the time, so put some nice little felt cushions on there so it doesn't make a lot of noise when I move it around. But basically what's underneath there is not too much. This is my Revision 1 model, so this had a lot of uh, let's try this, let's try that type moments in there. Um, but what there is, these are the uh, the chatter blocks assemblies inside the brakes essentially. These little uh, posts sitting up right here on the side of this beam, it's probably pretty hard to see. Um, but these little posts right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this is what centers the ski and it keeps it from going left to right. So like when the train comes in one way or the other, it pushes on these cross assemblies and that's what actually keeps the ski in place. And that point right there, depending on which way the train is going, those points is where all the energy is transferred from the train to the brass into the frame and then back into the track. Uh, that is how those work. So when mechanics go out on a daily inspection stuff and they look at these, you have to look very carefully at the underside of these brakes and look to make sure that those little pegs are not broken off. Um, the real ones have hardware in there that you can actually adjust to make them tighter or looser or move the ski one side to the other. But again, this is just a revision one little thing that I made in the shop. I was having fun with it. So yeah, the thing can run upside down. It worked just fine. Okay, the next question is for the inverts. What makes it invert? Well, you can take this guy because of these little brackets right here in the end, and then just turn them upside down. And now it's an invert. Without these little brackets right here in the end, they would just fall apart. There you go. That way it could run right side up. I've already put air pressure to it. In the shop, it works great. Um, 
I just had fun building this and I just wanted to share it with everybody. One of my thoughts was actually, you know, I could actually make these things and sell them off probably. Uh, this one, not so much. It's got a lot of my, you know, like Revision Zero stuff in there, which is not like something I would try to like, yeah, people could buy this. Um, not sure if it would take off anyway, because right now it takes me a long time to make this. There's a lot of welding. There's a lot of grinding. I did a fair chunk of machining inside here as well. Um, any mechanic that's worked on rides that's actually put brass into skis like this, which is almost every ride mechanic out there, uh, will tell you that the riveting of the liner to the ski takes the most time also, even more time than that is when you have to remove the old rivets to take this, the liner back off again. That takes a lot of time. Um, but I took the same amount of time in this too. There's 26 rivets on each ski. That was a lot to put in there and a lot to get down. As I was kind of having fun doing it because as I was sitting there um, drilling and countersinking, boring the holes down for the rivet to go into, and then you have to countersink the bottom. Doing all that, I was sitting there kind of remembering, oh, all the, all the time that I've spent over my career drilling and countersinking brake back brass. And it, most mechanics out there will tell you, it's like, oh yeah, you could spend a lot of time making brake brass in the shop. The park always needs it. You're always going through it. But yeah, one of my thoughts was like, hey, you know what I could do is like, I could eventually sell these things off if I wanted to, if I could make them cheap enough. Because right now, if I were to sell this, this would be like a, uh, I've probably put close to four or $500 into this. Um, plus it took me, I mean, including the design process where I was measuring things out and researching materials and stuff, took me like $500 close to and like three months to get this done. Long time. Now, I could just start copying from here and making small revision changes and things, but it's still start to finish if I had, you know, solid eight hour time frames to work on this. Um, I'm still probably looking at probably two to three days straight in the shop working on that. And, you know, the cost, the, the big cost at the end is that it's like all the materials inside there, then it would be my time on top of it. And I charge a lot for my time. <laughs> I do. I charge a lot. I charge, uh, my shop rates basically $90 an hour. So when you say like, okay, it took you, you know, 20 hours, well, that's $1,800 worth of labor time, theoretically. I uh, couldn't put that on there. But if I can figure out how to get it down cheaper and uh, to be made more effectively, I wouldn't be adverse to putting a couple of these up onto eBay or something like that to, to sell them off. Um, I know they're it's super cool. It's something I would want, but also not sure what people would want to do with it other than just like I'm doing with it you just let it sit on the desk and it's pretty cool to look at so anyways that's my mini brake that I made um, pneumatically operated pinch brake pretty much almost a carbon copy of what you would find on a ride with some minor modifications to make it my own deal anyways uh, if you like this sort of stuff, let me know what are your thoughts on it. Um, is it cool? Is it not? Would you want to see something else? I have other ideas too. I was like, ooh, I could make one. I'm not sure the purpose of it, but I'm like, I could, I could make an eddy current break. Not very much to look at, you know. It's just two big plates right next to each other. Don't know if that would be useful to anybody. Um, but my other thought, which would be way more expensive than this one, would be a brake that's closer to like a B&M knockoff. Um, that would be way more expensive because there is a lot of machining involved in those. Just there's a lot of machine work involved in those things. Um, but I'm thinking about it. Let me know what you think I should do. Let me know if people want to, would anybody ever want to buy one of these? Is this even a thing? That's a good question. 
I know everyone would probably want to buy one if I put them up online and they were like, oh, 50 bucks. Yeah, everyone would want to buy one, but there's each one would be in the hundreds, like the three or four hundred dollar range each time one were to go up. So that's why I was like, I don't think this would be economical to or feasible to put up and do. Um, like, subscribe, do all that stuff downstairs. It helps me out. Again, Ryan the Ride Mechanic. I don't have little ones made yet, but if I did, I'd tell you to stare out the little air gates. <laughs> Stay off the full-size air gates, too. Bye.